Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bring another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Retro Card Bagged Zartan and Storm Shadow. These retro card bag figures are Walmart exclusives. Not only start off by simply saying Walmart sucks, I absolutely hate their website, their pre ordering is horrendous, their exclusive availability is also usually horrendous, and their customer service and store conditions are also horrendous. I pre ordered these guys a long time ago, and then guess what? Game release time. They're in stock. My order is quote unquote delayed. My order was stuck, and there's really no way to fix that. You can call customer service. They will not be able to fix it for you. They can simply maybe force a cancellation if that's what you want. Of course, they're in stock, so it's not a big deal. I can cancel and reorder them. But they charge five dollars more for Storm Shadow instead of twenty four. It was twenty nine. Come on, not charging retail because their stupid algorithm sees these popular, so charging extra. Come on, Walmart, and I pre-ordered them ahead of time for retail. Card's still good. There's money on it. And it is stuck. This has happened so many times with Walmart pre-orders, okay? I'm done bitching about that now, but Walmart, fix your shit, please. All right. I mean, speaking of, I have the retro card back Snake Eyes on pre-order, but that doesn't mean shit, because it could get stuck. Then I'll never get it, even though I'm locked in, or at least it should be. Okay, like I said, getting a little off topic here. So, these guys arrived today. In addition to all that, this has happened with every retro card back figure I've gotten from Walmart. They throw in an envelope, not even a box. The thing comes in all beat up and warped. Now, I open my G.I. Joe figures, but I keep my Batman stuff unopened. And as an unopened collector, I do understand you want to get your stuff in good condition if you don't open it. And honestly, I still want it in good condition before I'm going to open it, just enjoy it more. Not a big deal for a person like me, because I'm going to open these and toss this package in the trash. Still, Walmart, fix your shit. So let's take a look at the packaging. At the top, we got a little warning. G.I. Joe, Zartan, ages 4 plus. Old school type packaging. Looks really cool. Hasbro, interesting. Not familiar with that Hasbro logo. Maybe this is an old one or something. Zartan in the package. Can't wait to check out the similarities and differences with the previously released Zartan figures. He's got the alternate mask, backpack, hood, pistol, knife. Guess that's a display stand there. Backside, got a little collector card you can cut out about Zartan. Here's some more retro card back Walmart exclusive figures. And here is the barcode, if that helps anybody. So next, we have Storm Shadow, retro card back. Figure looks fantastic, a ton of accessories, it says Cobra Enemy, I noticed Zartan doesn't, and I know he's not exactly part of the Cobra team, he's one of the Dreadnoughts, but they usually work for Cobra. In the back, more of the figures, his sort of collector's card, and his barcode. So no further ado, let's open them up. Alright, now that we have these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. Looks like they come with the same accessories their original releases came with. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation, and we'll compare them with their original releases. We'll compare them with a bunch of other G.I. Joe figures, and then with a bunch of other action figures from different various companies. So, hope you guys enjoy this video, and let's start off with Zartan. So here's Zartan. He's known as the Master of Disguise. He's not a Cobra. He's the leader of the Dreadnoughts, and he reports directly to Cobra Commander. He comes with a display stand, a backpack, and the backpack keeps his different faces. He gives up one alternate face. He's a master of disguise. He has a removable hood, a pistol, and a knife. But before I take a look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. This is the third release of this character in the G.I. Joe classified line. We have the original release, a deluxe Hasbro Pulse exclusive, and now the retro card release. Let's take a look at him. Start with his face here. He's bald. He's got, I don't know, I guess a tattoo around his eyes. A little bandana there. Blue armor beyond that. No shirt on. You can see the muscles on his ab there. Double jointed elbows. Double jointed knees. Sheath for his knife. Hole for his backpack. Overall, good looking figure. Can't wait to compare him to the other versions. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Looks pretty good. And here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. The bandana is also removable. Now check out his accessories, and let's start off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand. 
It's a rectangle, got the Cobra logo in there. Two pegs for the pegs on his feet, kind of hollow. Now check out his bandana and hood. They're both brown. They're made of a soft, sort of rubbery material. You can stretch, put the bandana on him. Then you have the hood here. Looks good. Nice sculpt and detail. Once again, it's got a lot of give to it. Very stretchy. Here's Artin without the hood or bandana. Then, with both the hood and the bandana attached. I don't know, the fact that he has no shirt on and the armor makes it look weird. It's like he has one of those 80s sort of stomach cutoff shirts. And I don't know, his hood looks just kind of weird. It's not attached to anything. I feel like it should be attached to a shirt or jacket or something. Now for his knife. It's got the silver blade, jacket edges, a couple holes at the top, and the handle there. Here's Zartan holding that knife. His finger actually fits into the little hole there. And here he is, holstering that knife. Now for his pistol. Looks a bit different. Almost like, I don't know, maybe it's a blaster or a laser gun. I think it's just a pistol though. The scope's okay. Pure black color. Here's Zartan holding his pistol. Now for his alternate face. Just supposed to be a regular guy. He's got a little mustache, a tiny bit of goatee. The eyes are white, which is kind of weird. It's hollow, it's going to fit on top of his existing face. Here's Zartan's regular face. And here, with his disguise, his fake face. It actually looks pretty good, kind of convincing, except the white eyes. And except the fact that he's still in Zartan's outfit, just has a different face on top. It's not going to fool anybody. Now for his backpack, which I believe is supposed to be some sort of cold storage for his faces. As you can see, it's got, I don't know, some sort of interior working parts up top there. A couple of pegs on the side, you'll be able to holster his pistol there. Extra holes there for accessories he doesn't come with. Peg to attach his back. Now it can't open up. Storing his sort of flesh, organic face. Here's Sartan with his backpack on. You can't tell from the front, but you spin him around. There it is. And you can put his face inside, stowed away in his cold storage backpack. And you can also holster the pistol onto the side of the backpack, stowing away all of his accessories. Now I'm going to check out this version of Zartan next to the original version and see what the differences were. Obviously there are some paint differences, but is there anything else? It looks like it's exactly the same sculpt. So, start off with the hood, different color, bandana, same color, the armor, all black here, black and gray here, blue here, sort of gray and black here. Go for the down, looks like everything else is the same. The pants are different color, the belt's a different color. Boots a little bit different, some gray here. Most noticeable difference, the blue armor here, pants, hood. Now they're taking a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories. Now let's check out his height from bottom to the top of his head. He's standing at about 6.5 inches tall, which is going to translate to 16.5 centimeters. Now for his articulation, starting with his head here. Of course, he's going to rotate from side to side. He can look up quite a bit down good amount. His articulation at the top of the neck and the bottom of the neck. Can, can't really tilt his head from side to side, maybe the tiniest bit. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out a little bit less than 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. His shoulder pad, very soft, totally gets out of the way, doesn't obstruct the articulation. Butterfly joint, allowing him to go forward and back, bicep cut, double jointed elbow, although he's a little bit too muscular, prohibits him from going in all the way. Wrists rotate, and it's going to be hinged as well. His torso, ab crunch, forward and back. Ball joint is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Legs, complete does the splits, ball joints. He's got drop down hips, absolutely hideous when they're down, but push them back up. Forward all the way, back not much. He's got thigh cut, double jointed knees, boot cut. Angles go forward and back, tilt and rock, and there you have it. Here's this new retro card Walmart exclusive Zartan next to the standard release. And here he is next to the Hasbro Pulse exclusive deluxe version of Zartan. And here are all three versions of Zartan. And here he is next to Zarana, another member of the Dreadnoughts. Now let's take a look at Storm Shadow. 
everybody's favorite Cobra Ninja. He's the main nemesis of Snake Eyes. I remember as a kid, before I had access to the G.I. Joe comics and had watched much of the cartoon, I always thought Storm Shadow was a Joe and Snake Eyes was a Cobra. That's how they were in my action figure world for a while, as the color scheme just made me think that. But I know a lot better now. So let's take a look at them. It's very similar to the recent Storm Shadow they released, which is the best one. He's got the ninja mask, eyes exposed, Cobra logo on his chest, sleeveless shirt, he's got the wrap around his arms, a little sash here with extra weapons across his chest, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, he's got the ninja sort of socks or shoes with a little toe removed, I'm sure there's a name for those. Overall, it's a good looking Storm Shadow, very similar to what came before, but some minor differences. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Mask is basic, but looks good. And here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all his removal parts detached. Now for his accessories, and let's start off with his hands. Here's his first set of hands. His right hand is holding some ninja stars, and his left hand is a fisted hand. Then, his next pair of hands. This is a pair of gripping hands with trigger fingers. Now for his quiver, bow, and arrow. Here's his quiver, got plenty of arrows in it. It's got two sheaths for his swords, a peg that's gonna plug into the hole in his back. Then with this bow, looks like a compound bow. These things pretty nice. The strings, got a little give to them, but not exactly gonna take any poses. And of course, one single arrow you could attempt to pose with him holding the bow. Here's Storm Shadow with his quiver attached. Here's Storm Shadow holding his bone arrow. It actually has a very little slot here that's going to help hold your arrow into place. It's actually very stable. And he can stow away his bow onto the back of his quiver, and that single arrow also fits in. Now let's look at his swords. He has two of them. They're very similar, except one's a little bit shorter than the other. Beyond their length, they're pretty much the exact same weapon. The blade looks good. Handle. Here's Storm Shadow holding his two swords. And here he is, holstering them. Now let's check him out. This is the single version of Storm Shadow. Let's check out what differences the retro card version has. Start with the head. Exactly the same. Torso. Seems exactly the same. Biggest difference I see so far is going to be the wrap. He's got a little bit of extra sort of armor there in the gloved hands. Bottom of the feet a little bit different. The wrap is a little bit different color around the shin. Beyond that, it's pretty much exactly the same figure. And now let's check out his height. Bottom to the top of his head. Standing out about 6.1 inches tall, which can translate to about 15 and a half centimeters. Now for his articulation. Starting with his head. Of course, you're going to rotate side to side, look up, down, about that much. Tilt his head a little bit from side to side, not much. Shoulders on a ball joint, goes up about 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint, allow him to go forward and back with the shoulders. Bicep cut, double jointed elbows. He's got a wrist cut where his wrap is. Wrist going to rotate, and it's going to be hinged. Looks like it's that way. Traditional ab crunch, ball joint in the waist, rotate around, forward and back. Legs, complete does the splits, ball joints, drop down hips, they look hideous like this, but push them back in place, no worries. Forward all the way, back not much. Thigh cut, double jointed knees. Having a little trouble with that bottom part there. Seems kind of obstructed by the thickness of his pants. He's got a shin cut, his ankles forward and back, tilt rock, rotation is in the shin. And here are all four versions of Storm Shadow they've made so far. Here's Zartan and Storm Shadow working together. They're both on the Cobra side of things, but unlikely allies to say the least. Now let's check them out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other Hasbro G.I. Joe figures. Here's the new wave of retro card Walmart exclusive G.I. Joe figures. Next to the first wave, Lady J, Gung Ho, Destro, and Baroness. 
next figure that's going to be a retro card warmer exclusive is Snake Eyes. And I'm not aware of any others beyond that, although I'm sure there will be more. Here they are, next to some of the most recent Cobra releases. These are all army builders. Then, next to some more recent Cobra releases. Here they are, with some earlier Cobra releases. And now, with some recent Joe releases. Here are all of my Hasbro G.I. Joe classified figures on the Cobra side of things. I believe I have every single one, except for the light blue Cobra Commander, and the first Target exclusive Viper. I would love to track those two down and complete my collection. And here's my entire collection of G.I. Joe figures on the Joe side of things. I do believe I have every single one, every single variation on the Joe side. Now let's talk about next to some other Hasbro lines. Here they are, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. Then, with some Hasbro Fortnite Victory Royale figures. And now, next to some Hasbro Indiana Jones Adventure Series figures. Now let's talk about next to some action figures from different various companies. So we can see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise, in case you don't know which lines you can mix them with. Since they're Hasbro, G.I. Joe classified figures, they're typically the 6-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the smaller action figure lines I collect, and work with larger. Here they are, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. And here they are, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. Then, with another one of my wife's plants. And here they are, next to some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Mattel. DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. And now, next to some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And here they are, standing with some NECA figures. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here they are, with some McFarland toys. And now, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. And finally, next to some Jack specific wrestling figures. So overall, these are some pretty cool G.I. Joe figures. This is my favorite of all the Storm Shadow figures that I have. He's very similar to the previous release, but the wrap around his arms, the lack of armor, just looks a little better. Storm Shadow's accessories are fantastic. I love that he can stow absolutely everything away. Zartan here, on the other hand, he's my least favorite of all three versions, and it's really just because the armor is blue and doesn't look nearly as good as the brown or gray versions. Two salt figures. Looking forward to getting the retro card snake eyes whenever I can. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.